Welcome to Financial Assets Part 1. Let's get started. Financial assets are a company's most liquid resources. Liquidity refers to how quickly an asset could be converted to cash. The most liquid of all financial assets are cash and cash equivalents. Short-term investments are next in order of liquidity, and then accounts receivable is third. We'll be covering and learning more about each of these financial assets in this and the next two modules. This module is dedicated to understanding more about cash and cash equivalents. But before we focus all of our attention on cash and cash equivalents, let's take a look at the basis for valuation in the balance sheet. What we're referring to here is how do you determine the amount that should be reported for cash and cash equivalents, short-term investments, and receivables on the balance sheet. Cash and cash equivalents will always be reported at the face amount. Face amount is the simplest of all things to determine. It is how much is on the face of the cash or the cash equivalent. For example, what is printed on the face of a $10 bill? It's $10. What is printed on the face of a check for $150? It's $150. All cash and cash equivalents have a face amount, and this is the amount that is used to determine the amount reported on the balance sheet. Short-term investments in marketable securities are reported at fair market value. Fair market value is the amount that the short-term investment would trade at on the balance sheet date. So the amount that you could buy or sell the short-term investment for on the balance sheet date. Account receivable is reported at net realizable value. Net realizable value is the amount of the receivable that you expect to collect. Again, we'll be studying more about short-term investments and receivables in the next two modules. For now, let's just focus on cash and cash equivalents. Cash equivalents are very safe, they have a very stable market value, and they mature within 90 days of acquisition. Again, cash and cash equivalents are reported on the balance sheet at face value. Examples of cash include currency and coin, checks, money orders, cashier's checks, credit cards, and deposits in savings and checking accounts. When we say that credit cards is an example of cash, what we mean here is when we use our credit card. So if we use our credit card to purchase dinner at a restaurant, the amount of that credit card charge becomes cash to the restaurant. Cash is anything that the bank will accept for deposit and businesses can deposit credit card charges just like they can deposit checks, cash, or any other of the items listed here. Examples of cash equivalents include treasury bills, certificates of deposit, and commercial paper. Here we have Home Depot's consolidated balance sheet. And as we see, the first item listed on the balance sheet is cash and cash equivalents. Next, we have Home Depot's income statement listed. Take a few seconds and see if you can find the cash and cash equivalent on the income statement. Did you find the cash and cash equivalent? I hope not because it's not there. Assets are reported on the balance sheet, not the income statement. Cash and cash equivalents are the most liquid asset. All assets are reported on the balance sheet and not the income statement. Here we have the statement of cash flows. This reports the change in cash from one period to the next for the entity. We see that there are three sections, operating, investing, and financing. The three of those sections added together show the net change in cash. Then the net change in cash added to cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the year equals 
cash and cash equivalents at the end of the year. So if we go down the first column, January 30th, 2011, all the way to the bottom, we see cash and cash equivalents at year end of 545,000. If we skip back to the balance sheet, we still see the 545 million dollars that we have and that matches up to the cash and cash equivalent of $545 million on the consolidated statement of cash flows. Re going back to one of our first units, we call that articulation of the financial statements. Cash management is important. We need to properly manage our cash in any business. We need to maintain accurate records, we need to prevent or minimize losses in cash and avoid cash sitting idle for extended periods of time. All of those are objectives of a good cash management system. We also need to have internal controls over cash. Cash being the most liquid resource is very easily misappropriated or very easily stolen. Our internal controls over cash include separation of duties, preparing budgets and forecast, depositing cash daily, making payments by check rather than by cash, and reconciling the bank statement. In review, cash and cash equivalents are the most liquid resources. They are reported on the balance sheet at face value. The statement of cash flows explains the change in cash and cash equivalents, and cash management and internal controls over cash are very important. That concludes our introduction to financial assets and to cash and cash equivalents.